Hello everyone and welcome back to Kentucky Garden Gal. This is Nancy. It's Wednesday, so it's a Walkabout Wednesday. And in this video, we are going to be talking about how to transition your garden from a summer garden to a fall garden. We have about 10 more days until it's officially fall. But if you've been out to the big box stores, if you've been out anywhere, you are seeing that they have the fall merchandise out. And with the size yard and garden that I have, this is all I am buying for fall. I have, I bought two of these orange mums. I think that looks, they got squished in the car. These were $6.98. Have two of those. And I bought three of the smaller ones, which are $3.98. And the reason that I bought those was to fill in some places by the back door where I have my sweet potato vines, uh, the purple and the chartreuse, chartreuse green that's so pretty. And those will just naturally go right in there and, and fill out. Now, the bigger ones I am going to put up front. And the first thing that you want to do when you buy your mom's is to get them out of the container that they came in and up pot them. They've started out in those containers. They've lived their life up to that point in those containers. And now they really need uh, more room. And also the secret to keeping your mums is to water on a daily basis. And if you forget a couple of days, chances are they're not going to look very, very good. So when you are buying your mums for this fall, keep in mind that you do need to keep those watered really, really well. Now, I also wanted to show you, of course, I had to visit the clearance rack uh, at the big box store. And I came home with two rose bushes and an elderberry. So I wanted to kind of go over um, what I bought and what my plans are for it. This is the first rose bush right here. And I have an area out back because typically when we're thinking about like the knockout roses, those will bloom until November. And these were, I think I paid about averaging $12 on clearance and these are two gallon um, containers so I was, I'm really happy about that but I also wanted to show you you know the the biggest concern when you have your roses is rose rosette disease RRD and that is carried by a mite M-I-T-E so what I am going to do, I'm getting ready to do uh, a planting of roses, but I found this product. Um, I found this actually at Walmart. It's A-R-B-E-R. -E I've never heard of this company before. This is the first time um, that I'm buying this, but they had three. They had one as an organic fertilizer, one as a fungicide, and then this for uh, an insecticide to prevent insect and mite buildup. So, my plan for next year, as gardeners, we're always trying to have a better year. Make sure my mic is on. Uh, as gardeners, we're always trying to do better than we did the previous year. At least I am. And I learned something, even though I'm, I've I'm a longtime gardener. I've had a garden for more than 30 years. I have a gardening YouTube channel. I am telling you, there is always something to learn about gardening. So going in to 2024, there are some things that I'm going to be doing different because I'm going to try to stay ahead of the pests and diseases that are just common, that just that are carried through the air, that it's not that you're a bad gardener or that you have done anything wrong. It's just that that's, that's part of it. You know, that's just, that's just part of gardening. So if we can get a little bit ahead of it, I think it would make us feel better and hopefully save some of our plants. 
So this, um, I will uh, dilute and the two row, well, in fact, all the rose bushes that I am getting ready to plant, um, this one and this one that I just bought today, when I was at the store, I looked them over really good. You know, I wanted to make sure that they didn't have like black spot or mildew or um, anything that I thought looked bad. And I picked these two out. What I will do is this one is pretty dry. This one has been watered fairly well. But I will, I will clean these out. I'll give these a good soaking in fertilizer, in a fertilizer, just, um, just like a, um, I'll probably do like a rabbit poo tea, just put some rabbit droppings in some water and make a tea and let them set in that. And then when I go to plant them, I will amend my soil with some other things. But I'll just cut back anything that needs to be cut back but it wouldn't surprise me if between now and November, these two um, will settle in and, and give us some pretty blooms um, for the rest of this season. And then they should be ready to go next season. So another thing that I bought, and I think you can see it right there. This is a Proven Winners. This is a Black Beauty Elderberry. It was normally $30. I think I got it for $14.98. And again, it is a two gallon, but I am trying to grow just as much food as I can uh, for myself and for my bunnies and my chickens in my backyard. I have one uh, elderberry bush that, that's doing great. I, I bought it, it was just tiny this year. But this one for a two gallon, and uh, for what it cost, I decided that that would be a good investment um, for my garden. So another thing that we want to talk about, now is the time to plant your bulbs for spring. So you are seeing these pop up. A lot of you are ordering them and they maybe won't come. It is hot out here today. I'm just burning up. Uh, a lot of these won't come if you've ordered them online, they may not come to the end of October. And that's fine, you still have plenty of time. Now, if you're wanting to buy yours at the big box store, run, because they've just gotten them in. All of the bulbs are fresh, but I'm telling you, if you wait just a month, you're not gonna have a very good selection. So when you are buying your bulbs, I'm, I don't care what it is. I don't have this flower, so I decided to add this um, to my spring garden. But you want to check your bulbs. Even something like this, I went through several. I had about four lined up, and I picked out the bulbs that were the hardest bulbs that I could find in those packages that looked the best. And oftentimes, like later on in the season, I have um, gone in and they would have the bulbs discounted. But when you go to press on the bulbs, it's just, there's nothing there. It's just gone. You know, it's just died. So you're basically buying air and you don't want to do that. So now's the time if you want to buy from the store and be able to see what you're getting, just make sure that your bulbs are, are good and hard and you know they're all about the same size see how those bulbs bulbs look so I'll get these in the ground um, here in the next couple of days but let's go walk around and look at uh, the fall garden that I have we'll just start right here by the back door and I wanted to show you this is the moonbine plant and let me tell you I have enjoyed this so much and tonight this one will be blooming these two bloomed last night this one will bloom tonight possibly this one will bloom tonight but I have enjoyed this moonbine so much and it smells wonderful now, I had talked a little bit earlier about the mums that I bought. So, see, I'll just pop 
uh, a mum right in there and right in there. And then I have a place over here in this container and I'll just pop it right in there. And then that way I have filled my containers and they'll be fine until I'm the next change that I do will be uh, decorating for Christmas. That's just how I do. You know, you do your garden however you like, whatever suits you. Your home and your garden is your sanctuary, so what you like is really the only thing that matters. We are standing here looking at the fig shrub. It's really more of a shrub. And I'm seeing some figs. So there that is. It looks awfully healthy. And I started this many years ago. It was a pass along plan. I had a friend that had the shrub and uh, she was able to let me dig up just a piece and had this. This is where my fig came from. So let's walk back here. Now, look at this. This is a mole plant. And I tell you, they're supposed to keep away moles, although I don't think they do because I still have plenty. But look how pretty this flower is and how interesting that is. So even though, you know, it's almost the middle of September, I still have flowers in the backyard. Now, if you remember, I bought these glads maybe two months ago. They were deeply, deeply discounted. I can't remember how much I paid for them, but you know, when they got, when they arrived, I wasn't that terribly impressed with them. So I went ahead and planted them out so they could grow. So I gave them a really good home in, uh, in the soil. And look at how pretty these are. These are just pretty as they can be. Now, this is a Cosmo. And I am telling you, you, if you aren't growing Cosmos in your garden, and there's the flower, you are, you are really missing out because this is a very hardworking little flower, just like the zinnias. And so this is, I actually have three um, cutting gardens of these. This is one. There's one over there and then one that's over there in that corner. And the way that I have done it, I've planted them. Oh, there is a monarch. Look at that. Look how wonderful. That's what makes coming out in the garden so fun. But that is the secret to having flowers. It's called succession planting. And, uh, you know, for many, many years, I planted one time. I, I planted, you know, for a summer for a summer garden, both uh, flowers and vegetables. And now I am to the point where I am sowing seed just about on a weekly basis, nine months out of the year. And I'll show you uh, what I'm talking about. So you remember these beds. Now, these are not up to snuff on the soil. I need to fill them up. But for what I'm wanting to do, for the fall, these will work fine. Um, I had carrots and tomatoes and basil in this bed, so I pulled everything out, and this is a new batch of carrots that's coming up. They're right there. This is a batch of radishes that's coming up, and then this, which is just pitiful, this will be lettuce, but that is enough soil to grow lettuce. It will do just fine. And I wanted to show you something over here with the foxglove. This is the tansy, and look at the pretty flower that that has. And this was given to me. This is a pass along plant. But this is a foxglove. Oops, I'm getting my shadows. This is a foxglove that has come up. There is one that will bloom next year. Remember, the foxgloves are biannuals. So, when I talk about know your weeds, and I'm very serious about that because 
if you don't know what is a weed and what is a flower that you want to keep, you'll just pull up your flowers. So I was out looking around. This is a volunteer foxglove. So I'm letting that grow up just a little bit and then I'll pop it in this bed. There's another one right there, just growing uh, beside a rock. So I'll come in this fall and I will put this, these two plants back in here. But additionally, I will sow foxglove seed so that I will have uh, and the, the, the seeds that I'm sowing this year will be for next year. So I'm always just sort of trying to keep ahead of myself um, on my flowers. But I wanted to tell you all that I let time get away from me and I should have planted dahlias, more cosmos, and marigolds because they would be absolutely beautiful right now. So those three things are at the top of my list to make sure I get sown next year. Now another, I love the bees on the on the zinnias, another plant that I want to talk to you all about, I have just never heard of it before. And uh, you know I love these gardening Facebook groups and someone asked what it was and when I saw it, I thought it was some type of hellebore or Lenten rose. It was that beautiful. Well, I didn't say anything. I just wanted to see what other people said. And they said, oh, that is uh, ornamental oregano. Never heard of it. Never seen it for sale in any nurseries around here. It is absolutely gorgeous. So I got online and I just Googled the, you know, ornamental oregano seeds and I found some I think it was the park seed company and I ended up uh, getting those I, I found some more that I wanted but this I'm gonna put a picture up um, for you all to see but put this on your list of plants that you really really need in your garden for next year these are beautiful the ornamental oregano is beautiful in um, in flower pots as a spiller and I think they're I want to say it's a perennial like zone five through ten maybe something like that which we're a seven so no problem there but um but yeah make sure that you take a note of those now let's check out and see what these chickens are doing we've got one that is riding the um well she's not really riding it they're just sort of sitting there it is a warm day today so they're they uh take dirt baths and get in down where the where the dirt is cool of course they have plenty of water but aren't they pretty i just love my chickens and then i've got the bunny over there but yeah they uh they're a good group of girls and the bunnies have just produced the best um, manure for me and it's not hot it's something that you can just use right away and i wanted to show you one more thing as we walk back through the garden as most of you all know i'm very frugal in everything that i do um it's just my son and i here so you know, I do have to, to watch everything, but I wanted to show you these beautiful plants, and I recently became aware through a Facebook group that you can save, let's come over to these, and maybe I'll find some more. You can save seeds off of these. These are the seeds right there. Now, this one is ready to pull that one is ready to cut off see the difference that one is ready so I am going to come out and keep a close eye on these and I am going to be saving my seeds because this will be 
um, less seeds that I have to buy. And remember, I did a video on how you can take these and multiply these to have more. So once you become a little bit um, more confident in your propagation, you just will not believe the plants that you could have just by division. Um, let me show you this basil over here. This is my work area and it's a mess. But I wanted to show you when I pulled up the basil to put in more carrots, I just took my basil plant out and I cut this, I cut these off. So there's there's actually two different types of, of basil in here. And these I just did this too, but let me show you. Let's see this one right here. I can get it up without disturbing the rest of it. Look at the roots on that. Look at the roots. And so I will just take these out and I'll pot these up and I will have basil for friends and family. And I also found a new recipe, which is basil salt. I'm going to be making that in the next couple of days. I actually have some, um, some basil drying right now. But one last thing before we go, I wanted to show you that when I'm spending my money on the garden, I want to point out these two things right here. It's, it's just a type of stand. Um, gosh, I've had them for so long. They need to be painted. I don't even know where I bought these. I've had them that long. But you may remember them that this is what the sweet peas grew up. So in the spring, early spring, when I planted my sweet peas, they were growing up these in the raised beds. So I'm going to go to the Dollar Tree where I love to shop and get some bows and tie them on there. And that will take, this will make an entry into this path for fall. Then, when I'm ready to decorate for Christmas, I will take the fall bow off. I'll put lights on these and then a bow at the top. So I have used this one piece of uh, garden decor. I've used it for three seasons. And that's really what I like to do is find, you know, invest in pieces that are versatile. Um, and it just, it, it helps. And then you can, you know, you can have money for other things, but I just wanted to share that with you. And let's walk over here. I wanted to show you how pretty this is. I think I told you that for the summer, I spent about $20 on annuals. And this was, this was some that I bought. This was some that I bought right here. This is a begonia that someone gave me a piece of years ago. I have it all over my garden. I use it everywhere. Of course, this is uh, Creeping Jenny. You know, once you get a piece of that, you have it forever. And yeah, that is what I did. I just took, um, I just took a couple of those plants, popped them in, and then made that whole display. There's some more over here. Um, the same thing. And another thing that I like to use, this is tansy. The tansy that I showed you back in my garden. I will take herbs and flowers that are perennials and then just pop them in plants. Now, when it comes time uh, for me to transition over to fall. Our first frost is generally around the middle of October. I will come out and I will take cuttings of all of my sweet potato plants and I will put them, I have a window upstairs in my bathroom and I will put those in that window and then I will have my sweet potatoes for next year. This is a plant that I overwintered that has just been beautiful. Um, all summer long, it just loves that spot right there. So I'll take it in again this year and see what we can do. 
And then I wanted to show you, this is my night blooming cirrus. And this is considered a, a tropical plant. So I do not leave this outside when the night temperatures are going to be 60 degrees or less. So I'm really watching the temperatures this time of year because, you know, this is a plant that um, it's just one of those plants. If you like different plants, I guess, and they're a little fussy, but I like it. I, you know, I, I like to have one and I'll put the bloom up and show you what the bloom likes looks like they're just absolutely gorgeous and i learned about this plant when i first joined the garden club here in franklin and the ladies that had them you can tell when it's going to bloom and they would i don't even think we had cell phones back in i think they would call but they would say so and so's night blooming cirrus is going to be in bloom tonight and about 8.30, we would head to their house with our flashlights. And those are just precious memories. Those are wonderful, wonderful memories that I have. You know, most of those ladies, sadly, aren't even with us anymore. But, you know, I need to do this with, with my neighbors and with my friends. It doesn't look like this one is going to bloom this year. But I have taken them inside and they have bloomed. And if they do, I'm going to call up my friends and my family and I'm going to say, Hey, the night blooming cirrus is in bloom. You all need to get over here and see this. So I hope that you have enjoyed this video. I hope it's given you some ideas on, um, on, on your garden, maybe what to uh, look for next year, what you can plant to have. Um, have more plants for fall next year. So I hope you've enjoyed this. If you have, would you mind hitting the subscribe and like button? And if you want to leave a comment, that would be wonderful. But I appreciate you all watching this and you have a great day.